Hi, this is Editor's Take. I'm Sakshi Batra and I have with me Gaurav Chaudhary. He's the Deputy Executive Editor of Money Control and we are here to discuss about the announcement made by Congress President Rahul Gandhi regarding the minimum income scheme. Thanks a lot, Gaurav, for joining in. Now, it's a season of poll promises and uh, Congress for sure is not leaving sto any stone unturned. First, it was the announcement of the nationwide farm loan waiver if they come to power and now it is the minimum income scheme. For the benefit of all our viewers, why don't you share all the details of the announcement? Yeah, so what the Congress President yesterday said was that yesterday there was a meeting of the Congress Working Committee sure. to discuss the draft of the manifesto and after the meeting he came out and made a specific announcement saying that if the Congress were to vote it to power then they would come out with an income support scheme right. of 72,000 rupees per year yeah. and for those earning less than 12,000 rupees. Uh, what however is not clear at this point is that every everybody, every family uh, which is earning less than 12,000 rupees a month yeah. will be entitled to 6,000 rupees as an uniform a grant or whether people earning less than 12,000 rupees, will, uh, will their, their income will be supplemented to top it up to reach the threshold of 12,000 okay. rupees. So we okay. do not yet know whether it's an all for nothing scheme or whether it's a subsidy scheme. What we only know is that this is going to benefit uh, close to 5 crore families, that is 50 million families. Mm. Mm. Uh, that amounts to about 25 crore or 250 million people, mm. uh, which he said the Congress president and the Congress people, uh, Congress uh, leaders are saying subsequent, have been saying subsequently, it's going to benefit the lowest 20% in Correct. terms of income uh, levels of India, uh, population of India. So the poorest 20% will be eligible for an income support. But how of, are they going to identify these poorest So that is, that is that is one big question that remains yeah. unanswered. Mm. Uh, please remember one thing that what it, uh, since 2011, we do not have any official poverty estimate of India. Okay. So we do not know, there is no counting of the poor that have happened. And I'm, I'm, I'm sure uh, since growth has happened and the economy has expanded, sure. uh, regardless of, uh, you know, extre uh, co sometimes controversial GDP data also, yeah, there are people that have moved out of poverty. Mm. Uh, we do not know how many people are poor in India and on, on what is the methodology of estimating these poverty levels. Mm. Uh, the last poverty, uh, we, we also do not know what is the kind of poverty line that we are going to use for this kind of methodology. Uh, mm -hmm. We do not yet have an official poverty Absolutely. line, defined poverty line. The last poverty line that was defined was in 2011. Uh, we have something called the Tendulkar Committee Report, okay. which is a Tendulkar poverty line. And subsequently, with the Rangarajan Committee Report, which is, which is now referred to as the Rangarajan poverty line. Right. Over and above that, in 2012, we, we came out with, uh, we conducted the socio-economic cost census, sure. the results for which were uh, made public, some part of the results were made public in 2015, mm. uh, which used a very different method instead of a poverty line method. And they said that uh, they use something called the so-called inclusion exclusion method. So yeah. say for instance, somebody owns a car yeah. or a two wheeler mm. and that family will automatically get excluded from the poverty counts. Mm. Uh, but be that as it may, we first need to identify the poor. Yeah. Uh, and those who are eligible for this kind of Absolutely. state, so state back big, income big support scheme. to identify yes. the right kind of beneficiaries of this scheme. But you know, to understand this idea of universal basic income, which is considered quite utopian mm -hmm. until now, yeah, at yeah. least it was considered. Then Sikkim also announced uh, yes. its own state, uh, you know, universal basic income scheme. But uh, do you think the country is ready for such a scheme right now? Uh, what it does is that it officially, uh, the Congress officially, at least in zone estimate, defines the poverty line as at 12,000 rupees per family yeah. per month. Mm. Uh, there is something that needs to be done for the poor. Please remember one thing, yeah. we are the sixth largest economy. We are the fastest growing major economy in the world. Mm. But significant number of extremely poor people live in India still. Mm. And these are not just in thousands or hundreds, yeah. these are in hundreds of millions. Correct. So something needs to be done for them. Sure. Uh, it, they, this, this, is, this, is, these are the this is the class of people that needs state support. Yeah. And it's the responsibility of the government to handhold them right. and somehow make them uh, you know, they raise their income levels so that yeah. they can spend more and take care of themselves. Mm. Uh, that is something, so whether the universal basic income is the perfect scheme or some you know, some, some different kind of a welfare handout scheme to be, needs to be carried out is a yeah. matter of dispute. It's a matter of, acad academ uh, it's a matter of debate. Sure. But what is certain is that there are millions of poor people in India mm. 
that needs state support, mm. whether the state support is going to come from an UBI scheme or yeah. whether this state support is going to come by, come from other welfare schemes is something that needs to be discussed. But before that, we need to count the poor. Right. And what could be the fiscal implications of this? And can we say that such a scheme is fiscally tenable or not? Will the other schemes which are already there, say subsidies of uh, you know food and electricity, all those, will they be subsumed under this scheme or so, not? So that is not clear yet and the mm. Congress uh, party has not also made it clear. What mm. they have said, Congress leaders, have subsequently said that they, the, you know, this is going to be uh, the fiscally balanced, so they are not going to overshoot fiscal targets. Right. Uh, back of the envelope calculation says it's going to cost about 3.6 lakh crore. Okay, okay. We don't know the details yet, but what we know that an income support scheme of this nature, mm. uh, there is now a benchmark mm. of the fiscal cost, mm. and that benchmark is that. Of what the government announced, uh, what is called the PM Kisan, right. is that the farmers' income support scheme, which is announced in the interim budget, sure. where every farmer owning uh, two hectares or less will be entitled to six thousand rupees a year, not mm. a month. Mm. Uh, that is going to cost. That is, and that is going to support. You know, uh, make about twelve crore, one hundred twenty million farmers eligible yeah. for mm. that support. That is going to cost the government seventy-five thousand crore rupees. Yes. If that scheme, which is twelve crore families. 120 million families yeah. of 6,000 rupees a year yeah. cost 75,000 rupees, 75,000 crore a year. Sure. Then the cost of a scheme that the Congress Party has announced, which involves five crore families and 6,000 rupees a month, will be significantly higher than 75,000 crore. Right. I don't know where that money is going to come from. Whether that money is going to come from borrowing. Mm. That's not going to be fiscally prudent mm. because there is only X amount of money to borrow from the mm. market mm. or whether this is going to come from higher taxes mm. remains to be seen. Higher taxes, either of them, while one is fiscally not acceptable, the other may not be politically acceptable. Absolutely. Thanks a lot, Dangora, for sharing all that insight with us. Well, lots of the, a lot of the details of this uh, scheme announcement still are awaited and a lot of clarity is still needed. But for sure, doing something for the poor is uh, the prime and the foremost thing that uh, the government should be looking at doing at this stage in time. Thanks very much for joining us in this edition of Editor's Take and do stay logged on to moneycontrol.com for more news and updates. Thanks for watching.